Hi, Mike here. Back to basics this week with some chart related tips and tricks. I've delivered a few Excel beginners courses over the past few weeks. So I thought for this video, I put together some of my favorite time saving chart related tips. I'll show you how to generate the chart title from the contents of a cell, how to switch row and column to change where the X axis headings come from, how to quickly add an additional set of data onto an existing chart, how to change large numbers so they display with the word millions or thousands instead of zeros, and how to prevent your chart disappearing when you hide the source data. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. Let's start with dynamic chart titles, by which I mean pulling the chart title from the contents of a cell. In this case, it's going to be cell A1. So if I click onto the chart title placeholder, click into the formula bar, type an equal sign as if I'm entering a formula, and then click on A1. What it does there is it references A1 to B1, because it, A1 is a merged cell, on the sheet called chart title. When I press enter, it picks up the contents of A1 and uses it as the title. If I go up to A1 and I change the text that's in there, it automatically updates the chart title. Next tip is swapping axes. This chart was created from the data in B3 to H6. How did Excel decide that the departments were the data series and the years were the x-axis headings? It's based on the number of rows and columns that are included in the chart. The larger number is placed on the horizontal axes. So here there are six columns and three rows. And that's why the years, which are the column headings, are on the x-axis. If your data has an equal number of rows and columns, by the way, Excel plots the rows of data on the vertical axes and the columns of data on the horizontal axes. What if I wanted sales, IT and marketing to be the x-axis headings? All I do is select the chart, click onto chart design and click switch row column. Tip number three is adding an additional set of data to the chart. This chart shows January to June. I've added July's figures to the data, but they've not been added to the chart. Click on the chart, go up to chart design, click select data, and then change the data range. So here, instead of going from A4 to B9, I want it to go from A4 to B10 and click OK. Of course, if the data was in a table and the chart was based on a table, it would happen automatically. So I've jumped over to the tables tab. This data here is in a table. We can tell that because we've got the end of table marker at the bottom of B9 and we've got the table design menu. And all I need to do is select any cell at all in that table, go up to insert and select the type of chart I want to create. I'll just create a simple column chart, just make it a little bit bigger. And now when I add July, it automatically adds it to the chart. And when I add July's figure, it automatically adds that to the chart. For the next tip, we're going to look at changing the display units of numeric values. Here, because the values being plotted are in millions, the Y axis values are displayed with lots of zeros. But instead of displaying lots of zeros, I want to display 0.5M, 1M, 3M, etc. It's neater, it's tidier, it's more compact. To do that, right click anywhere on that vertical axis and select Format Axes from the menu that comes up. And that opens up the Format Axes panel. In the middle, we have display units, and I'm going to change that to millions. Now, that isn't what I want. You can see what it's done. It's, it's displayed the word millions, and it's just put a, a simple numeric scale 
up the left hand side. So I'm going to change that back to none. What I'm going to do instead is go to the number section, which you can see here, expand it. It's already got the category set to custom. If it wasn't set to custom, you need it to set it to custom. And then I need to add a code into this format code box. I'll delete out the existing code. And what I want to type is zero, full stop or period zero, two commas. And then in double quotes, I'm going to type M, close double quotes and click add. And you can see what that's done to the scale. The final demo is how to stop your chart data series disappearing when you hide the data source. Here, I don't want the underlying data to be displayed. In the real world, I could put the chart onto a separate sheet and hide the sheet with the data. But let's assume I don't want to do that. So if I select columns A and B, right click and select hide, it hides columns A and B, but it's also hidden the data that's on those columns from the chart because the chart is referencing A and B. So what I need to do is select the chart, go up to chart design, select data, click on hidden and empty cells and tick show data in hidden rows and columns. And as soon as I do that, that data reappears. So there we are, five tips for creating charts. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give us a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.